Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday. Talk Tuesday. I almost forgot it was Tuesday. Um, because yesterday was Remembrance Day. So, for me, it's a Monday. Anyways. And it gets very complicated since I had some days off last week and traveled and I'm all discombobulated today. Who is that? Oh, Archie. Archie's on a mad run. Okay. So, for those who like a head count, we have a Hi, Archie. <laughs> Archie! Good boy! I don't know if you can see him way in the distance there. At least it looks way in the distance on camera. Um, so we've got Archie out front waiting for us with his perky feather tail. Uh, Tucker and Maggie are out there. We've got Stella, Rowan Bailey, Willow Newton, Hamish Rory, Nova, who should be in the front. She's like nothing. I was always there. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, and we're a little bit more than halfway through walk. I had to delay putting the Bailey. Uh-huh. I had to delay putting the camera on because it's windy today. Um, and in case you don't live in a place like Ottawa, in summer, we have the Humidex. So like we have what the temperature actually is. And then Bailey, we have what the humidity makes the temperature feel like. Um, and then in the winter, we have wind chill, <laughs> which is what the temperature actually is. And then what it feels like because of the winds. So I think it's like two degrees or something Celsius. And with the wind, it feels like minus four or something like that. It's a bit chilly today, but at least there's sun, which uh, there basically won't be in about a month. So I'll take it. Anyhow, okay. So I did in fact film a Talk Tuesday yesterday, but I did not have time to upload it before I left. And then by the time I remembered again, it was certainly not Tuesday. Bailey! Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> I know, you're full of mischief today. All of you are. Um, so I basically haven't walked since last Tuesday. And uh, we went on a trip to Kitchener. The boys got photographed. Um, I think I shared it on the Instagram stories. Uh, uh, maybe. I know it's on my personal Instagram and the stories and the highlights um, under each of the dogs if you wanted to go check that out. Um, if you haven't already followed us, that was very cute. Um, if you haven't already followed us on Instagram, it's uh, Stride Ottawa, I believe, at Stride Ottawa. And I personally am at uh, Ash in the 613. And really, it's mostly just <laughs> my dog content and food. And then, of course, the stride is just these guys. I post a daily photo, uh, which I still have to take. And I wish I had taken it before we turn around because this angle with the sun is not super helpful for photos. Though it does make them all look like they have glowy outlines. Bailey, get out of there. I don't know what is in that tree, but everybody sure wants to put it in their mouths. And that leads me to believe that they shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Whenever they get too excited about something, I'm like, okay, this is obviously something disgusting. And I'm usually right. Anyhow, um, so last week in the not posted video, I talked about the questions I got about traveling with dogs. Um, for example, it was Rowan's first trip. Willow, that's it. Willow! Hard no. Willow! Uh-huh. No, she's right there. I feel like I'm missing a troublemaker. Hold on. Two, four, eight, ten. No, I'm good. How sad is it that a pack of 11 feels small to me? Anyways, okay, so it was Roan's first trip anywhere, and uh, we were driving. So a combination of long hauls in the car, which honestly he's used to with pack walk, so I wasn't too concerned about that. Staying in a hotel, I was a little bit concerned, 
because he is, or historically has been a chicken. So he gets concerned about things that he hasn't encountered before. And typically his concern comes out in like a, f not a frantic bark. Uh, I don't really know what the word for it is, but multiple barks in a row. Um, and he just keeps at it until someone addresses his concern, which of course you don't want to, you don't want to be that guy in a hotel, right? So, um, we worked on that a little before we left. And the way I work on that, like YouTube and Spotify are honestly wonderful tools at this point because you can find noises for just about anything um, and you can play them. And funnily enough, that's also the way I prepped him for Rory. Absolutely not. Thank you, ma'am. Good girl. Um, that's also the way I prepped him for Remembrance Day. So last year he didn't come with us to the ceremonies because he was so fearful and I just wasn't going to risk, um, I wasn't going to risk the sounds. Oh, if you don't know what Remembrance Day, it's November 11th here in Canada and it's a day we have ceremonies and take moments to recognize the service of our veterans. Um, and generally speaking, if you're going to one of the ceremonies, we spend it with my dad who is in a, uh, military cemetery and they put on some great uh, ceremonies. It was really, really nice this year, but it does include cannon fire and uh, it can include flyovers of all sorts of different things. Like we had, I think, helicopters last year or two years ago. <laughs> this year we had surprise Canada geese. <laughs> they got startled by the cannon, so they did a flyover. Maggie, that's a no for me. Thank you. Um, Rory, with the group, thank you, good girl, um, and actually the way that I prepped Rowan, I left it later than I'd like, but I wanted to do like a quick evaluation of stuff before we got there, so I went on YouTube and I found previous Remembrance Day ceremonies, Bailey, thank you. Um, and I played them at a significant volume. Like I tried to get as close to what he would experience as I could. Um, so like the first time he heard cannon fire, he jumped, but he didn't bark. Um, second time, a little jump, third time, tiny flinch, fourth and fifth time, nothing. So I was like, okay, we're good for cannon fire. Flyovers, nothing. Bagpiper. He was definitely interested in the bagpiper, but not scared. So I made the call and I brought him and he did amazing. He did great. So typically what I do too, is I will bring um, like dental chews or dehydrated duck feet or duck neck or something, something that takes a minute to chew. And the first bit of cannon fire, I will give them that. And by the time they're done it, the second cannon has usually gone. Um, and then any other that, after that, I just have food with me. And anytime there's a loud, scary noise, they just look at me and they get food. Um, and I do that every time, especially something like Remembrance Day where it's not often enough for them to really remember. Out, get a move on. Yeah, I see what you're into. I find it hysterical that they go in water still. No, also no. Newton, that means you. Thank you. All right, Hamish, in front would be preferable. Um, yeah, so basically, like, whenever I take them to do something new or I know that there are things like traveling, I enjoy bringing my dogs places with me. Um, so I break down sort of what would be unusual and then what training I need to do with them to get there. So, <laughs> oh, we're having a thing. Okay, just in front of me and not in the back of my leg, please. 
Oh, and I took the boys to the beach for the first time. Um, it was a little anticlimactic. Kronk, when he was a puppy puppy, when he hit sand, it was like insta zoomy. He was so excited. Obviously, not anymore. That kid found a giant piece of driftwood and was trying to figure out how to bring it with him down the beach. Eventually, we had him just leave it, but he had fun trying to figure out how to carry this thing. It was pretty hysterical. Um, yeah, and that's part of why, like, I don't really do obedience training. Hold on, please. Um, that's why I do lifestyle training instead. Because I've already done obedience trials, I've done agility, I've done all that with my, uh, with my first dog at this stage in my life. I just want to be able to have them happy and healthy and be able to show them the big world that we live in as much as I can. Like, obviously, there are still places that I can't take them and I don't take them. Um, but being able to travel with them, show them the beach. Next year, I hope to show them the ocean. Just making that world as big as I can for them is the goal. And there's something special about... My biggest compliment, for example, when I go to restaurants is... Um, when the wait staff is like, oh my god, I didn't even notice you have a dog. It's like, yeah, that's how it should be. You shouldn't notice them because they shouldn't be causing a fuss. Um, or like, we'll go into a store and I typically ask if it's not made clear to me one way or the other. Hamish, absolutely not. Thank you. Um, then typically I'll ask before I bring the boys in if the store is dog friendly. And uh, I've discovered... <laughs> through observation that there are quite a few stores that my guys are allowed into that generally speaking will say no to dogs and I find that very flattering too where oh you were right there you were walking in a heel no wonder I didn't know where you were <laughs> um and yeah I just love that I love being able to bring them basically anywhere to visit friends and all that stuff but it all depends on the life you want to have with them right Anyhow, okay, definitely got sidetracked. Uh, I don't think I answered any questions, but if you do have any questions about this or any other video, you know what to do. Otherwise, hope you guys are having an amazing day. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.